Praise the Lord, everyone. We are speaking of grace. And so if you have your Bible, I'm going to get you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. If you have a notebook and a pen, grab those and let's take some notes together. And if you have family who are sitting by themselves right now, go grab them and let's study grace together because the grace of God is a gift and the grace of God is a gift that is freely available to anybody. And so we should all be partakers in God's grace and we should all know what God's grace means. So let's grab our families and start at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Verses 1 to verse 3 is what we've been focusing our previous study on. And this passage here tells us that we were dead in our transgressions. We used to live according to the way of the world. We used to look to the world for our hope, look to the world for our peace, look to the world to take care of us, look to the world to show us for things to believe in. However, because of this, we were disobedient to what God wanted us to do and what God wanted us to be. And therefore, according to verse 3, like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But this right here is a picture of who we are before Christ. Remember what we learned in God's providence, and really it's been a running theme throughout all of our studies. God did not create the world. He did not create you and I to live in this way. He created us to live in his love, in his mercy, in his grace, in his presence fully. And this is remind like we are reminded of this in verse 10. For we are not, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are God's handiwork. It just shows us that God put time and effort into making you and I. And if I read it in another translation, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. You are created with good intention inside of you. God didn't create you with anything bad inside of you. The things of the world is what changes our view and makes us focus on the wrong thing. And that's why the first thing when it comes to being saved is that you are saved by grace through faith. Your first step is to take faith to to use your faith, whatever, however small it may be, and look to God, repent from our sins so that we may be made alive. And in that moment, the grace of God is with you to help you and to show you. It says that in verse four and verse five of this chapter. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. It is a gift. It is a gift that is given to us, this grace. And it says that even when we were dead in our transgressions, even in those moments where we were, we had no idea who God was, or even if we did know who God was, we went above what we knew he wanted us to do. We went beyond that limit. That even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive with Christ and it is by grace you have been saved. It is a gift because Jesus came to this world while we were still sinners and he took the burden of sin because the burden of sin is heavy. The Bible reminds us and the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But Jesus took that burden upon himself and he overcame it so that we could have grace when it comes to pursuing him. We could have our, his grace and our faith working together to show us salvation, to show us his love towards us. To be saved means that we have salvation and we need salvation so that no one can say, I did this or I did that. But we are all saved through grace. We received salvation through grace. By grace, through faith, you are saved. So today I encourage you to keep your faith strong and remember that in those moments where you feel like your faith is faltering, you have the grace of God upon you to keep your faith strong, to build you and to keep you uphold, uh, uplifted. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow.